Hello. Today's video is about ruminating thoughts. Ruminating thoughts are common after someone has experienced trauma, in particular in cases of PTSD and CPTSD, but when a person can't stop thinking about their awful experiences. Like many people, I experienced them once the CPTSD developed, but I still at least had a little degree of control over them. Sometimes I could force them to stop and think of something else. Then a few years later, after surviving carbon monoxide poisoning, my brain was very damaged from that. Part of the damage was no longer having that ability to control the ruminating thoughts. I had to learn new and effective ways to cope with them. After my mother's sudden death in April 2019, my ruminating thoughts got really, really bad. At first, it was incredibly hard to handle them on top of everything else about the situation. But with God's help and a few months of this, I got a lot better grip on the situation. When ruminating thoughts happened, I learned it's best to give it all possible to get alone and sit with the thoughts. I let them run their course, reminding me of whatever awful thing they're about, and I don't try to stop them. I also allow myself to feel the emotions that the thoughts trigger. Whatever that is, anger, sadness, hurt, I feel it. Now, this isn't easy. In fact, it's really pretty hard. But it's also very well worth it. The more times I've done this, the less frequent the ruminating thoughts on a particular topic are. Immediately following my mother's death, I kept having a ruminating thought about the night the police came to give me the news of her passing. It was hardly a pleasant experience, to say the least. I would relive their visit over and over and over. At first, I did my best to ignore these thoughts. I didn't see how it could do me any good to think about that night. As time went on though, and the thoughts were still frequent, I realized something had to give. I started allowing myself to think about that awful night and to feel the emotions that I remember feeling that night. I leaned on God to help me, but even with him, it was still pretty painful. However, the more I did it, the less painful ruminant night became. As an added bonus, the less frequently the ruminating thoughts also became. I still remember that night pretty frequently, but I think now it's on a much more normal level. After all, it hasn't been all that long since my mother died. So it's pretty normal considering that, as well as our lack of relationship and the rest of the whole very odd situation. If you consider, if you, I'm sorry, if you suffer with ruminating thoughts too, I recommend you do the things I have. Get alone with the thoughts as soon as you can. And let them run the course. Feel your feelings. And let God help you get through them too. Tell him what you feel and allow him to validate and comfort you. It's going to hurt at first, I know, but it does get easier the more you do it. I promise it's well worth any pain you're going to feel at first when those ruminating thoughts come less frequently, or maybe even disappear entirely. It's kind of like lancing a boil. That just doesn't even sound pleasant. It must be awful to experience, but it's got to be done if you want to release that infection and let your body heal. You're doing the same basic thing. You're going through the discomfort of facing these ugly things head on so your mind can heal. Ruminating thoughts are a miserable thing, I know. They don't have to cause you unnecessary suffering anymore, though. You can make those miserable things work in your favor. You can use them as a tool to use towards your healing. Thank you for watching my video.